Welcome back to Making Men Academy. I am your host, Isaiah Keen, and I would love to be the lead role in a musical. Today, we're gonna talk about one of the things I'm very passionate about. I'm passionate about everything we talk about on this podcast. This is also like the peak of my day, the height of my day, I'm excited. I wanna talk to you guys about callings and purposes as for us individually as young men. And why this is so important is because we all have a unique calling. We all have a new unique purpose. And so we want to explore these things and really get to know ourselves best. And we've been doing quite a bit of talking about this lately, but now I want to talk to you guys about how you can find your calling and your purpose inside of and in line with the Bible. So without further ado, let's get into this. I can move this microphone now and it doesn't really make any noise, which I am pumped about because I have this crazy little arm thing that holds it now. Um, junkiest piece of junk in the world, but but it actually, hey, it works. So that is, it's fun for me. I want to talk to you guys about how we actually understand ourselves inside of the Bible, because the Bible is the ultimate context for life. It is literally like the life handbook. You know how parents say kids don't come with their instruction manuals? Well, we're God's kids and God gives us an instruction manual for how to be his kids. So we kind of get a cheat in that way. We get like a little cheat card, um, Uno reverse card a little bit. And so we really just need to like look inside the Bible. And it's also so easy though, when we actually spend time studying the Bible, for me at least. So I wanna bring that to you guys today. Let's dive into this and talk about where we should find our purpose and calling inside of the Bible first. What's our first destination? Well, when we're looking at the Bible these days, we have a unique, all right, this is gonna get a little bit um, theological here. This is gonna get a little bit because in order to understand ourselves, we have to understand God. Now, we're different from, uh, this is a side, this is all completely aside. Let's back up a little bit. In order to understand ourselves, we have to understand God. And then we understand us, but we are broken people. And so we have to understand people because understanding people is not the same as understanding God, but understanding God helps us understand how we were originally designed and created to be like God because we're broken, fractured images, fractured mirrors now. My phone, literally, I'm using an iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is like crazy to me. I got this back in 2021 and it's a beautiful phone. It's an amazing phone. It's in this nice chrome space gray color, same as my computer here. You can even see my mouse back here for you audio listeners. I've got like my mouse that I plug in, my USB port, all of it is in this gunmetal chrome gray color and it's beautiful, I love this color. Um, that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. That's just a fun fact. So that you guys can visualize the phone, but I have no idea how this happened. The phone has a massive fracture on the back. This phone is very shattered and cracked. Even here on the camera, around the camera, there are cracks and shatters and fractures right there around the little flash up here on the top cameras. There's three cameras on this thing and a photo sensor, all sorts of stuff, microphone. But the entire phone is completely compromised on the back because the case is the only thing keeping it safe. And even the case is fractured because it just happened that happens and so we are like this phone now we were designed and created by this inventor and it was a beautiful design and creation it was sleek it was polished it was perfect it was good but then stuff happens we drop the phone adam and eve dropped the ball and you get broken and fractured and now you're no longer that exact image of perfection that you were before so obviously we know all of that but now we have to understand this new identity and we have to re um, not ah, what's what's a good wording we have to re understand and reapproach ourselves as humans with this brand new identity that we have that is a broken version of the identity god gave us that was perfect and that was good that he said was good this is amazing this is perfect it's beautiful so we have to do that now um but one of the best places we can start is understanding the original design. That's a great place to start. And this is cool. So now I'll get back to the point I was originally going with. Now that we have that out of the way, we were one way, we're broken, and now God puts us back into this intermediate state where we're getting fixed again. So we have to understand the Bible sort of backwards now. 
Because when you start in Genesis, you start at the beginning of the world, literally before the world was created. All that existed was God. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, they were the only three, the three in one, the Trinity, which is incomprehensible to us, but it's one God. He existed, they existed in the beginning, and that was it. The end of the Bible is the book of Revelation, and that is literally the end of the world. And the world doesn't end, it's transformed, it's fixed, it's mended. He restores it to that picture perfect version. The phone is no longer cracked because he, he refurbishes it. He gets it back into its original place of, you just bought this thing and pulled it out of the, out of the nice box and you're just obsessed with it now because of how awesome it looks, how cool it is, all the brand new features it has. You love this phone because that's how it was supposed to be. And it's beautiful and it's amazing and it's updated. And so we're gonna be like that in the end. But you literally have Genesis before the world was created to Revelation, the end of the world as we know it, and the restoration of the world back to God's original design. So it's a timeline, it's chronological. It works inside of this temporal scale and on this timeline. But we have a brand new revelation inside of the gospel that follows that timeline, but now we interpret everything from the standpoint of the gospels. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the first four books of the Bible. When we read those books, we understand one thing. We're learning about one thing, one person, Jesus Christ. He is God in human form, which again is another crazy mystery, just like the Trinity that we can't really explain. We just, that's amazing. And he comes and he lives the perfect life, even inside of this broken world, even inside of his broken body. He's a, he has like this broken, you know, he's living in a broken world. And yet he lives the life of a perfect phone that has never been dropped. He never drops the phone. It never gets cracked. It never has, I have a crack across my screen as well. This phone, I'm surprised it's, it's still working, but I'm so thankful. The Lord is literally sustaining this phone right now. <laughs> But he lived that life for us that we didn't live. We always drop the phone. We freaking throw the phone across the yard. I had a friend, my best friend back in middle school, told me this story. He had an iPod and it was warped. And I asked him, this is the iPod that he used. We were able to text when we were both on Wi-Fi because, you know, phones really weren't like crazy. They were new. They'd been around a long time, but it was like an iPhone 4 back then. And then you had your iPod that just had a screen. So it was like crazy. And... He would listen to music, we'd play music on these things and text, and that was literally all we could do on them. But I asked him, why Why is this thing bent and so warped? And he was like, oh, I threw it off my deck and it hit a tree. And I was like, what? Why would you do that? And uh, I think about stuff, he, he still makes me laugh to this day and like, those are your old stories now. But, but he just freaking chucked this thing all the way across his yard, off his deck, which was really tall, by the way, into the woods with these massive trees and it just hit the thing. And may maybe he was joking, I don't know. It was sometimes hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure he was serious because this thing was highly dented and I believe the tone was serious. I remember a time where I was actually out doing parkour and I was jumping down onto concrete. And at the time I had an iPhone 7, it was in an otter box, this episode now needs to be named like phones and God and how they're the same, <laughs> something like that. But I had this phone and it flung out of my hand and was just spiraling, spinning, like rolling across the driveway, this big parking lot. And I was just watching it like, oh my gosh, I am toast. I am done. I am dead. This is the end of my phone. What is going to happen? So I go over to it. So I go over to the phone and I pick it up and thankfully it was okay. The, the case was not okay, but the phone was okay. And I was like, oh my gosh, phew, that, that could have been bad. And by the way, that case ended up being like multiple pieces that was just held together by the rubber. For those of you who have used otter boxes before, it's got like that case on the inside and then the rubber that was on the outside, the rubber was just literally holding the case pieces in place on the phone, it was crazy. Uh, and then I got this one and now it's going down the same path on accident. But that's what we do to ourselves. We just throw ourselves across the yard, across the driveway, across the road, out into the woods. And then we're broken and we're shattered. We drop the phone. It, it 
It's just how we live now. But Christ was not like that. And so we live, he lived that entire life. And now we read four viewpoints of his life in the four first books of the gospel, of the New Testament, that are the gospels. They make up the gospels. And the gospel, gospel just means good news. And so he is the good news. And now we can interpret, this is amazing, we can interpret the entire rest of the Bible based on the good news that is Christ. When we read from Adam all the way down to Jesus in Revelation, we see the chronological order and we understand the historical contexts. But then when we read the Bible starting with Jesus, and then we go back after reading the New Testament and we read the Old Testament, we can see where Jesus plays in and where he's always been there. He appeared to Joshua. He wrestled with Jacob. Like, all of these crazy things. He was literally there the entire time. And we see prophecies from the prophets. We see David talks about Jesus a lot. So it's amazing to look at the way that this works. And so my entire point with all of this is, that is how we are supposed to find our identity through the gospel, because that is the starting point. That is the good news. That is the word of God that is Jesus Christ. And that's literally the focal point of existence. For us as humans now, that is how it is, because there's no other way for us to survive. Otherwise, we can't be apart from God. Hell isn't a punishment, it's the absence of God's presence. And so people go around like, how could a good God send people to hell? That's the wrong question. The question we should be asking is, how do we get back to God so that we don't end up living in this place that is just completely void of God? We need to live with God. We should be asking, how do we get back to God? And that is where we can find our purpose. Now, our purpose is not always going to be ministry. It's not always going to be directly sharing the gospel, but we should look inside of how is my work and my calling pointing back to God. And one of the cool things we can do when we're trying to find, all right, what's our purpose? You know, inside of the church body, we have a purpose and then we have our work purpose. Sometimes they lend and they're the same thing. So I'm, I'm going over a lot of stuff right now, but I need to back up. We can look at a few things here. We can look at personality types first. That's something we just talked about not that long ago. And when we look at personality types and personality types in the Bible, we can say, oh, I, me, Isaiah, am very similar to David. We actually have the same personality type. And guess what? We love the same stuff. Some people might be more like Jesus or like Solomon, or like Moses, or like Elijah. And so when we look at these, and I don't know their personality types, some characters in the Bible, I say characters, real people in the Bible, it's easier to tell what their type was versus not. But that's a cool way to start and just to think about what are you drawn to? For me, it's the music, it's the poetry, it's the, it's going out and using my mouth and using my expressiveness to show people the love of God and the love of Christ. And that is how I personally engage with people and the gospel. That's how I spread it. For others, it might be you're a doctor. It might be, you, you know, stereotypical examples like that. I think people who serve in the military, people who serve in the forces and in the places where they're being policemen, firemen, that's really cool to me because those people are doing something very much like Christ. They're putting themselves on the line. That's very self-sacrificial, like to the point of death sometimes is what I'm talking about. So I think that's really cool. And there are plenty, plenty, plenty of other examples. When we look at people like Einstein, he really did a lot to figure out. He's another great example, very stereotypical because of how much he figured out and determined for people about how the world works, the universe, and all of the science. So he's helping us understand God's creation on a mathematical level, temporal levels, really cool things. Then you have chemists, and then you have politicians, and all of these people. And so we need people in these arenas and in these places. I did the episode with Jim Ramos, and he his podcast is literally Men in the Arena. Great podcast if you want to check it out. We need to get into these arenas and fight for what we know. And they're all different for each of us. So personality types is a good place to begin with. And next, what jobs are you drawn to? Like, what jobs are you drawn to, man? What do you like? What do you love? What are you passionate about? How does your personality affect that? Where are you drawn and what do you say, this intrigues me and inspires me? I have my guitar over here. I'll just grab it real quick. And I, I love guitar. This is an heirloom. And I love playing guitar. It's just amazing. 
And it's something that is a soul connection for me to God because it's a way of expressing myself and just flowing and really brings me to a place of calmness and serenity where I can connect with God. And through that, I can make music for people. I make this podcast. Like, I always feel like so many of my, my videos are exactly the same because they all are based around the same premise. What are you doing with your life, young man, to fulfill the only thing that actually matters inside of this world? which is living a life for Christ. So there's so many ways to do this. I have books over there about marketing and website building and all sorts of business type stuff. I got this big screen behind me where I make music digitally. I write my books. I have this entire thing set up here on Notion for my podcasts. And then I have, uh, I just put my guitar down. And then I've got my entire book hub for our writing community that I'm a part of that I love. That's like a refresher for me every every single week. I can come into this small group and that's a place where I can connect with people and find inspiration to go and express Christ and to show Christ inside of my writing. We live in a world that is so consumed by your truth, your voice, your message, and whatever empowers you, go for it except that it's completely heretical because the second we start talking about our voice, our truth, our message, we get shut down. And so we need to be unashamed going out and talking about this. Romans 1.16, I'm unashamed of the gospel of Christ for it's the good news. We need to talk about this to more people. That's as Christians, the best thing we can possibly do for someone else. So how can you do that? And this is like words of inspiration, but also practical ways. Look at people inside of the Bible. Who do you relate to? Look at the jobs that you love. Maybe they're similar to the people in the Bible. Maybe you're doing something that didn't exist back in Bible times that you have the capability to do now. Scientific stuff that we didn't used to know. Um, you guys should look up you guys should look up the Galileo incident inside of the Roman Catholic and Protestant history. It's really funny because these new these guys, Martin Luther and so Galileo, you know who he is. He was an astronomer, among other things. But he was proposing that we live in a heliocentric universe. And the heliocentric universe means that Helios, the sun, is centric in the center of our universe. And the Pope did not like that because it was the common conception that the Earth was at the center of the universe, right? A geocentric universe. And this is going on, this is happening. Galileo was a part of the RCC, Roman Catholic Church, and the Pope condemned him, sent him to an island, and did. he had to do a lot of things. He was deemed um, anathema. I think it's anathema. I don't remember. It's been so long since I've looked in. I used to, this used to be like a second language for me. Um, but he was deemed excommunicated from the church of the Roman Catholic Church because he had the crazy idea to think that the sun was at the center of the universe. Because in the book of Joshua, when they hold the sun still and they're battling, they're like, oh, well, obviously then that means if the sun is holding still in the sky, that's Earth's sky, that means the sun goes around the Earth. So obviously Galileo was right and the Pope was wrong. And this was an infallible statement that he declared <laughs> and that was wrong. So I'm not trying to get on anyone's nerves here, but there are things that we have access to now that they did not understand and were even saying was in infallible. My point is that that's an interesting story about they really had no idea what they were talking about. Anyways, but you can do things now that are not available back then, that weren't available, that didn't happen. My entire, my entire point with this is these are some amazing places you can look when you're looking for your purpose. And I would also say that you need to look forwards, which all of us are doing, okay? That's not anything new. Everyone here knows that we're looking forwards. We're looking at the rest of our lives. That's how we as men operate. And now, especially with the world that we're living in, and we're getting fed up with all of this femi feminist garbage and all these crazy things, getting put down for stuff that we're not even doing. We're kind of fed up as young men, as a whole group, with these crazy things that we're bombarded with the second we open the internet. And so we don't want to live in that world anymore. We're all looking forwards. We're all hopefully going to take a stand in the proper biblical way against this kind of stuff. Like, no, let's actually get into the places where it matters and keep fighting, not shut down and be reclusive, but let's go and do the things we need to do to actually fix the problem. And it all just comes back to, we need Christ. We need to live by the rules of the Bible. Because like we said at the beginning of this, that's literally the handbook for life. So I hope this was helpful for you. 
Sometimes I feel like this is too vague, but I also try and mix everything in with a lot of encouragement because we need encouragement sometimes. We might be working jobs we don't like. We're trying to grind up and build up for ourselves a future that we're literally talking about right now. And so we want to have the availability of these things in our life and we need the encouragement to continue pursuing them. I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys in the next episode.